I don't know what I'm talking about here, but please bear with me. I just read something in the paper there about flow temperature and uh, on a condensing boiler. I think it's this thing here. You're wanting a radiator. You're wanting it to be as low as you can comfortably get it because when it's too high it can't even condense because it's just too high it doesn't get a chance or something they said but uh, this usually goes from about 30 to 80 degrees they said and they said in the paper to try turning it down to 60 degrees but as you can see I have no idea what that is you know and uh, the thing I read I read another article and it said usually they're set to E but these are usually 70 degrees which is still too high for this because the reason we're doing this is to save money because we're all done in because of the energy crisis at the moment you know it's the highest price it's ever been in the UK because of the energy crisis but probably well all, all year every year you probably want to save money don't you the flow temperature is not to do with heat it's to do with the speed that heats your radiators up so it'll heat your radiators up slower but hopefully it should get to whatever temperature you've set your radiator for so and when you've got it too high it can't condense which is the whole purpose of condensing boilers that's how I, I read it so I'm guessing that's 70 degrees because that article said E usually means economy which usually means 70 degrees but obviously times have moved on and you want to go even lower so I'm going to go here I'm guessing that's 30 degrees and that'll be 80 degrees they said that's normally what they're at but of course I can't be sure and so I'm going to say around there and see how it heats I've not really got the heating on at the moment because I'm, I'm saving money so I, I can't even work out my experiment until it gets too cold and I have to switch it on but you're looking for the radiator thing really most of you will have that and that's hot water there's radiator but uh, some of them apparently don't and if they only had one of these things it'll be flow temperature um, I'll need to take a break and rethink but what you can do anyway is just keep experimenting with the aim of always setting it lower. Apparently with these boilers, I could be wrong about this, but the flow out and flow in is a 20 degree difference. Like if, you're, if it's going out at 80 degrees, like it would be there, it's coming back at 60 degrees. But if you've got it down at, say, 60 degrees, I'm guessing that's it. It's going back at 40 degrees. I could be talking rubbish there about that. But there's a sort of differential uh, where the water comes back in and it's to get reheated. But uh, I could be talking total rubbish. But I just want to point this thing out. Most people will say radiator. I think since 2005 all, all boilers are, all combi boilers are condensers. Don't quote me on that. But you've got this too high. It's not doing the condensing anyway, so you're not. That's how I read it. This is open to discussion. So I'm going to set it there, and if it's out, if it's not cold, I'm going to go down even further. I'm going to keep going down as far as I can go, but you really, uh, because you just want that 20 degrees difference. It's not. It's not to do with the the thermostat. This isn't a thermostat. It's flow temperature. It's the speed that's heating the water up at, I think. That's how I read it anyway. So, it's something for you to ponder and actually find out the correct thing. I'll put the two articles in, in the links below. And the article said that even going down from like, I don't know, 70 to 60, you could save maybe between 7 to 10% of your gas how much your gas energy you know so that's quite a big deal it's the kind of thing you, you would think the boiler makers would make a big thing about it and have stickers saying that and it would really help with this said uh, degrees rather than guessing but you know you know how life is don't you 
I mean, if we're all wasting 10% of our gas, that's quite a lot, but the government and the boilermakers don't seem to bother about these things. I just read a bit more and I've come back with not very useful information. But, uh, yeah, I just come read a bit more. And really, when you've got this way up there, even if this is E rated, when it's up there, it may be E rated. It's the, the further down you go, the more it'll get to A rating because it can do the condensing then, which is where it, I don't know, it collects heat from the old flu, from the old tight boilers, flues or something. But uh, yeah, usually there's the boiler guy, or the boiler person, sorry for my mistake, will usually set it around about there, E. But they're saying you want to go as low as you can, but not, but they also said it will affect the heat, it will make it less hot. So they didn't say that originally, well, the way I was thinking. Because this is flow temperature, it's not, thing me, it's not a thermostat to keep. But uh, apparently it will make it colder. So uh, just go to whatever thing me, whatever you find comfortable. You know, and you could even vary it day by day if the temperature outside's higher or lower. But but they're saying try and go as low as possible to to save money, really. And if you want to save the planet, that's a sort of added thing, you know. But there's what I was finding. They're talking. They're saying it's combi boilers, but and con are condenser tight, which I think all that have been made since two thousand and five, or all that have been installed, are that type. This one is, and they're saying the normal is 80, 60 that people say that are, but, but really you want it lower than that, you want it 60, and then it'll come back at 40. Because it's, I really am waffling here, I'm, I'm struggling, struggling guys, but there you go. It's up to you now. I think I understand now. It's basically what this thing is heating the water up at. For the radiators and what they're saying like uh, say if i've got the radiator set for 22 degrees uh, well 80 degrees is probably far too much for that anyway and it's just waste or whatever and it can't do its condensing so if you really want it to be efficient well probably at 70 it probably could heat it up to 22 degrees but maybe as you go further down it may not be able to heat that that far I heard something in the news at Switzerland or telling everyone by law you can only heat your home to 19 degrees this winter, but I don't, I don't know if I'd be able to cope with that. I think mine's is 19 degrees when it's off at the moment, so. But uh, my water, I'm going to leave at maximum because I just want that as hot whenever I use it, you know, a shower or a bath. I just want that hot. You've only got using it for about 10 minutes or something, so. Whereas with us, you know, your radiators you're using maybe all, all the time or in winter or whatever, you know, so again, you know, or, well, a lot of the time. So, because, I mean, every time you, you use your radiator, maybe it's, it'd be good if they told you how much it was costing you, because maybe every blast is, given, is costing you about a pound or something, you know. But there you go. Try this, try going as low as you can but remember at some point you're going to go so low you're not going to get the temperature you want it to to make I wonder if that means it'll just keep on trying or if it will just switch off I don't know but I suppose if you think you'll forget all this info and stuff you could use a sort of maybe a mark and just so you remind yourself you know like I'll oh, just write flow here not very well you know, might be, be other things at 70 degrees. You know, I may be wrong about that also. Uh, maybe even a link to a page so that I remember why I'm doing what I'm maybe doing in the first place and all that, you know, so. Of course, if you're in a rented property or something, you want to make sure you can rub that off. If not, then you can use any type of marker you want, you know. Another thing to make sure is to make sure that your 
you've got no air pockets in your radiators because air pockets means it's, it's waste of space your radiators are meant to be 100% full of water and to make sure there's no air pocket you would need a key like this and you would put it in there and you, when you turn it whenever the water starts coming out that means the air pockets are gone so if I turn this and water starts coming out straight away it means there's no air pocket I didn't plan on doing this but anyway so I might as well now just, I don't think there's any air pocket in it yeah and there we go there was water there no air pocket so that's 100% full of water so it's 100% efficient in that term if you're too afraid to do that yourself you could ask your uh, boiler engineer or you could say do it the night before a servicing so that when the engineer comes you know that they're full of water and if it needs topped up with water then the engineer will do it you know because what you don't want to do is let out too much water and then the water pressure goes down in this internal system because you'll probably not know how to put more water into your uh, boiler system I mean I don't so you know you don't want to get in that situation so either ask your boiler engineer or do it the night before and then make sure the engineer knows that the, if the water pressure is right or not because if it's too low um, well somebody's going to have to fill it up you could learn how to uh, top up your water in your uh, gas radiator system but you have to look online in that and it's it's not as easy as uh, this that I've just showed you although once you know you know you know it's about connecting the water mains to the sort of one of the pipes I don't know it's a bit complicated you might even need a sort of an extra pipe I don't know but in this case if I had this open for say five ten seconds and no water was coming out it was only here it meant that I had a massive air pocket in my radiator and that was meant there was no heat getting into that air pocket area in the radiator so that was a big waste. If I'm sounding weird it's because I'm using a soundproofing thing. I'm trying out a soundproofing thing on close to my wireless mic. You can get these keys in, in a lot of places. Poundland, Home Bargains, now these sort of shops. But other places like Screwfix, uh, Tool Station, b and But I suggest Poundland and Home Bargains first because they'll probably be the cheapest. Or online of course, on eBay. Some, sometimes when you turn this, the whole lot will go around, the white thing and the, that. You don't really want that to happen. It's just this bit you want to move. Just, you don't want the white thing to move at all. So, look out for that. You could put a, a, a spanner in between there and, and hold it if you don't want that to move. I mean, don't worry about it. It's not a big thing because if it does move, just turn the key the other way, you know, back, back clockwise again. Um, and then have another try, maybe put a spanner in there to hold that in position. Because it's just this bit you want to turn, just the very end. You don't want that to turn or anything else. Probably the easiest way to find if you've got in your pocket is just to feel your thing when it's heating up. Only when it's, when you feel that it should be totally hot. And if there's any bit that's cold, when you think it should be hot, that means you've probably got an air pocket. And I think, I can't remember, but it might be around about here, but probably, or down at the bottom, but it could be anywhere, but it means that somewhere there's not water, and it's just an air pocket. And that's what I find, but uh, since I've been checking every year since then, I don't think I've had an air pocket since. I had a big air pocket once, and then when I sorted that out, I didn't have an air pocket again since then, but it is worth checking every year, you know, just when you start to put your heating on again, probably. Yeah, once your heater's heat, heated up, just check everywhere. Check, make sure there's not a cold spot. I would say do this when your radiator's cold. When your radiator's hot, it's hot water. So that would be hot water coming out, so... You really want to do it when it's cold.